Hello and welcome to the first video for the Pizza Party Calculator app using Thunkable. We're going to make an app that calculates how many pizzas you should buy for a pizza party depending on how many slices of pizza each party goer will eat. We're also going to link to some local pizza shops. And so by doing this app, we're going to be more familiar with the concept of multiplying fractions. Uh, the first thing we need to do is if you're working with a partner, you wanna decide who's going to be the driver and who's going to be the navigator. The driver is the person whose hands are on the keyboard doing the work on the computer. And the navigator is the person who's helping them out, making sure they're going to the right spot, coming up with new ideas, and in general, just supporting the driver. And then you also need to decide on a plan for switching these roles. You could do every 10 minutes, every other day, something like that. But it's important that everybody gets equal driving and navigating time. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to thunkable.com and click sign in. We wanna select Android because the app we're making today is an Android app. We will sign in with Google. If you're not already signed in, you may need to select your username and type in your password. If you are sharing an account, once you log in, you'll probably see some apps that other people have made. You can ignore those and go ahead and do create new app. Come up with a name for your app. I'm gonna do pizza party. You can do whatever you would like. And then at the end, please add your initials in capital letters. So pizza party HD would be the name of my app. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to take a look at what happens here. This is where we build our app. This is the screen in Thunkable where we have what the app will look like on our actual device. On the left hand side over here, we have our palette. And there are all of these categories that we can find different elements to drag over onto our screen. I'm going to leave the user interface um, section open. On the right hand side, we have the properties of the elements that we bring over to our screen. So we can change things like color and font and things like that. And we also have this section here, which is all of the different elements or components, and we can see what they're called and, and kind of how to navigate among them. Let's go back and think about what we want for our app. So in our app, we're going to be calculating how many pizzas we need. Well, first let's think about this. How many slices of pizza do you usually eat? And think about what fraction of a pizza you eat normally. So if you were to eat just one slice, that would be one eighth. The numerator is one because that's the number of slices that you eat. And the denominator is eight, which is the total number of slices possible in one whole pizza. So if you eat two slices, it would then be two eighths, three slices would be three eighths, and four slices would be four eighths and an equivalent fraction for four eighths is one half. So you can see that one half of this pizza would be what you are eating. So if there are four people coming to a pizza party and they will each eat two slices, how many pizzas should I buy? Well, in this image, we see that there are two eighths represented, two slices of pizza. What is the math involved? What kind of a math sentence are we gonna need to create to figure out this problem? Turn and talk with a partner, go ahead and pause the video and try to figure out what math sentence we need here. Okay, let's see what we needed for a math sentence. So two eighths times four, because we have four people coming to the party. They're each going to be eating two eighths of a whole pizza. So if there are four times two eighths, one, two, three, four, we are actually going to be eating an entire pizza. The four people coming will eat one whole pizza because there are four times two eighths here. So let's go back in, or I'm gonna actually go ahead to this app planning worksheet. We want our user to be able to type in how many people will be coming. So let's see what we want on our first screen. For our first screen, we just want a label up here that talks about is the name of the app we also might put an image there and we have a start button. On our second screen, that's where we're gonna do all of this calculating. In our example, we had four people coming, but we want the app user to be able to type in how many people will be eating certain numbers of slices. So for example, how many people will eat one slice? They'll type in a number, two slices, they'll type in a number and three. Then they'll press calculate and we have to code this to do some math here to figure out how many pizzas are needed, how many whole pizzas are needed. 
We'll go over this a little bit more in the second video. For now, let's go ahead and get our first screen set up. So we're going back into Thunkable, and over here in the user interface section, we're gonna drag over a label. Just click on it and drag it over to the screen. Wherever you see that blue line is where that label is gonna go. I'm gonna go over to Properties now. Since my label is selected, I can scroll down to where it says Text. And this is where I'm gonna put the name of my app. So I have Pizza Party Calculator as the name of my app. You can call that hopefully something similar to the name that you um, created for the app in general up here. You can change the size and font color of this label. So you could bold, you could do maybe size 30, totally up to you, that's a little too big. I'm gonna do 24. Um, you can change the uh, typeface. Right now it's default. I'm gonna leave mine at default. You can also change the text color. So maybe I want green, okay. Uh, the other item that we need is an image. So I'm going to drag this over, image, and right now this is just a placeholder. We need to go find an image to upload over here under picture. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a new tab. We can go to images, but we want to be careful and not just take any old pizza image from Google. We want to make sure that we're doing it correctly and finding a copyright friendly image. So while you're on images.google.com, you can go to the bottom right hand corner here and click on settings and then advanced search. Once you do that, you'll be taken to a place where you can narrow your search down to find images that are available to use um, from people who said that, they, that it's okay if you use them. So I'm just gonna go like this, pizza. We only need to fill out this top bar right here and then the bottom one, this dropdown, needs to say free to use or share even commercially. And that means that we can use it in an app and that the user of, um, or the creator of all of these pictures said it was okay for us to use. I like this image right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And when I right click on it, I'm gonna save it to my computer. Make sure to choose save image as, and then you can rename it here if you want to remember what it's called. So I'm going to save it as pizza and it's a PNG file. I'm gonna actually click on desktop so that I can find it more easily and then I'll click save. So I've just saved this picture to my desktop. I'm now going back into Thunkable, going over to picture. Remember this is still highlighted because that's my image placeholder. I'm gonna click under picture and click upload file, choose file, and now I need to find that picture that I downloaded earlier. So the pizza one is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna click open and click okay. So it's uploading that picture. You can notice here that it is way too big and that's all right. We have options here to change height and width. When I click on that, I'm gonna actually just do percent. I'm gonna do maybe 20% of the original size. And that's pretty good for me. And I'll just do that for both of them so that the entire image is getting shrunk 20%. I like that, maybe I'd go a little bigger, but for now I'm gonna move on and see what else we needed on our home screen. We had pizza party calculator or some other title that you chose, the image, and also a start button. So let's go back into Thunkable and click on button. Now we want this button to do something, so we're about to code it, and I'll show you that in a second, but first let's change the text of the button to say start, or next, or whatever you'd like. Again, you can change the font size and um, color and background color and things like that if you'd like. Now, we need this to go to another screen, but we don't have another screen yet. So let's create a screen by clicking Add Screen, and it will be called Screen 2. Click OK and give it a few seconds here. Sometimes it takes a while to add a second screen. Now I see that there's nothing on my new screen. That's OK. We'll do that in the next video, but let's go up back to Screen 1. You can click on this drop down here to get back to Screen 1. And now we want to code this button. So we've been working in the designer tab, which shows us exactly what our mobile device will look like when the app is running it. We're now gonna click on blocks to get behind the scenes and look at some of the coding that goes into this app. So on the left-hand side, I can see my components down here. I want the button to be clicked when button one is clicked. So drag that over. We wanna control it, so go into the control section and pick open another screen, it's right here. And we want that to be screen two. So you grab a text box at the top and you type in screen two. And in the next video, we will talk about what goes on screen two.